it's almost like we're one step behind, but in some weird ways we're not. We're, we're playing at the exact same position they were at the same amount of experience on the map. So yeah, if we watch them and demo review them, maybe there's a chance we can keep up, but, but uh, it's basically got to be trial and error and getting used to playing to the opponent. And if, if no one in North America is playing that style and you shift to that meta, maybe it doesn't, it doesn't work, you know what I mean? There's no counter to it, and it, it might, might be counterproductive in a weird way. Uh, well, the Europeans make it work pretty well. Well, but that's my point, because if everyone's <laughs> doing it, so, I, all right. Fine, well, they, 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 they fine, make it work against the North Americans. Whatever, man, whatever. This is like fight number three, man. <laughs> yeah, Why did I ever get back together with you? I uh, know, we're having a tough time. We'll get Boy, there. So, someone just like, we need to play like Taylor, Taylor Swift. We are never, ever getting back together right now over top of the stream. We'll get there, sweetheart. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. I don't believe you. <laughs> so we do have all ten in. Um, but I think I'm just waiting for the delay to catch up because everyone's just sitting in spawn. No, okay. I'm not they sure just had the knife right. round. We did the do the knife round. Okay, I had to reconnect, so I entirely missed that. So thank you for filling me in. It's fight number four, Moses. So we are going to start it off. So Niall, I'm on the CT side. I feel like an idiot for not knowing that. I was wondering why things look quite formal. But look at this push right now on the B side. He goes the one that's in control of their fate on the Niall position, but he already has one. He might be able to get more. No, finally Tarek will put him down. And they've already pushed through the backside. Mo is in, by the way. Mo for CLG right now, so get hyped. I'm sure there's lots of people that are uh, extremely uh, happy for that. So he's still in consideration for this spot, and he's actually going to be the man that gets caught out. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, man, you got to think Mo gets frustrated by something like that. What a one-tap on the USP. As Tarek will push forward, Semphis on low HP will get caught, and CLG now have the man advantage with this bomb down, but they need to get back into the site because right now Hayes is holding alone, and Valens catches Tarek. Hayes has to win that one-on-one -on -one against Automatic. He doesn't do it, so he's going to get on the bomb, and as a result, Cutler goes down. They'll get this round, although he's got no kit. Does he have it? I yeah, he has it. He absolutely yeah, does. Yeah, okay, good. That is a brutal round to lose. They had everything going for him. And that's the second time. CLG on train earlier tonight just full-blown, pretty much just full-blown rushed uh, B on, on train. So at the moment, they're kind of just saying, screw it, we're just going to rush something. It almost works out for him. It should have worked out for him. They had it set up perfectly. They just lost every every battle they really got in. So Nice retake by Nihilum. And, and Sanks continuing his stellar play with that drop-down shot onto Mo. Beautiful stuff from him. Continues it here early on. What what are they doing? Automatic. Automatic's like get out of, get off the e box. That's my spot, bro. <laughs> I, I want to use that to jump quickly over to catwalk. But they're going for the boost in mid right now from CLG's side. Nihilum definitely clawed back into a round they probably shouldn't have had, and they got so far away from the bomb was the problem. FNS now up and over to the top. Has the Tech-9 to work with. They'll bust out the vents. Now, that's curious because it will force them in B to pay attention to that, but they haven't really using it to their advantage as Sanks wants to chop out, take this FAMAS shot into Finesse, and does do decent damage. He's down to 35 HP, but now he's going to fall back up the highway. Here's your slide play, though. Yeah. As Eco jump scout. And he spotted three at mid, so they should know. There is one coming out. Hey, that's the bomb. They're going to get the bomb planted. So a misread here by Nihilum completely evacuating the A bomb site. Mo gets it planted. He does have a teammate with him, Tarek. So, I mean, they don't really have a shot at winning this round, but just getting that plant is huge, especially combined with the plant in the first round. This is going to be a definite third round buy. And Hiko getting aggressive all the way through the site, catching Tarek. Nothing he could do. So two kills. For an M4, two kills for Famas, one kill for the Sanks Famas. So the SMG actually does nothing for Valens or Senfis. And they're going to have to upgrade in the next round. So they haven't found the uh, the money bonus with them. I mean, fortunately, it's not going to hurt them too much. I can't see the money. Why can I not see the money when I press tab? I don't know. Send Broken? help. Send help. I already, I'm going to have to reboot <laughs> Mo's, the game probably. Moe's got that NAP. It's glass cannon, though. So if he catches a nade at the wrong time, that's going to be that's going to be bad news. And you gotta he's wonder how much. V. You gotta wonder how much of this is him, his input too. Oh, you spoke, that you spoke about the nade exactly. It goes a little bit deep though, so he's only taken down to 68. And look at the counter boost. And that's, a, that's, actually a, for that's like a clever off angle, off angle nade. Valens with the MP9 is gonna grab one. That sparks Semphis to peek up. Drops Valens. This third round buy is going terribly for CLG at the moment. I can't believe Finesse lost that battle. He was pre-aiming that counter boost, and as he gets soon, caught off by. Oh, as soon as his teammate died, he turns to look towards the door, and, and actually now look, there's even one player, that's Valens with an AK-47, pushing out the door, loses the fight to Tarek, but he does see two members 
This is good from Nihilum. This is this is more aggressive than we see North Americans normally play. And in fact, they're going to double that aggression as Automatic will slip into the same position. This could catch them off entirely. But all they're doing is getting a really good read on their opponent. And, and we don't often see this really early defensive play. This is this is a lot like Mouse Sports played earlier today. If anyone saw them in their uh, their matchup against... I spotted a little bit of it. Yeah, that was the, they were crazy. Man, I, I got to say, just off topic a little bit. As Mo, nice shot from Mo. So the glass cannon's paying off. I wonder how much of his input this is. This is because, as a stand-in, how much freedom are they giving him on making the call? You'd have to think calling for a glass cannon is fully on confidence. But they do take him down in the end. Tarek though manages to pick up two, and he brings this back to a one-on-one. -on -one. Does have the bomb? He's already found three. He's gonna have to get four to win out this round. As automatic drops out of the vents, does have this nade. Mm, good bounce lands on the feet of Tarek down to 42 and that Molotov or rather incendiary will push him out But no nope, actually comes up a little bit light It's gonna land at the generator not on top of the site So Tarek still has all the high advantage to work with a little bit of a step noise given away an automatic knows He's in position behind the box. It's pretty obvious at this point Tarek just has to play ring around the rose The automatic almost baits him out and gets the better oh. peak, but he can't get the shot He does through the edge of the box. How does Tarek catch that? That's almost bad luck and Nihilum will take this early by to their advantage and counter logic are gonna be back on the save that's a good round. Yeah, Tarek took a really good job of, of playing ring around the Rosie there, delaying as much as he could, but automatic. Through the edge of the box. Tarek caught it with his teeth. And that, uh, you're exactly right. That was great play from the Highland, and actually I'm surprised that turned into a one-on-one. -on -one. They had such a good read on the situation. A nice shot by Mo to open up that B site, but so many players from the Highland were converging over towards that, that side of the map. CLG just won some crucial gun battles to get it in there, and another plant out of them. But they are down 0-3. to three. I want to go back and just finish the point. The new mouse sports, if everyone gets a chance to look them out, with Dennis being super aggressive the way he was on Penta, complimented with Chris J, those two guys played amazingly well together. They supported each other so well in so many CT positions today that it was really exciting. So I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to see more from that team. Yeah, absolutely. Especially, I, I felt the same way about them from ESCA. They didn't really win anything. They, they didn't really do that well in terms of standings, but... He looked very, very good strategically with God B having his influence. Exactly, and he's one of the two players that remained, obviously, him and Chris J. So, the whole new lineup. I mean, it's a Penta Mouse Sports mashup. But, let's get back to this one, because right now it's a Nihilum performance. They've already picked up their first win of the season against Elevate. They're going Sanks up against be careful. the CLG guys this time. Sanks gets caught, like you say. He had to be careful, not able to do it. Automatic does turn back. Good response kill from him. But again, mid's been given up, and they've got full control. Mo. Only the Pistols, though, wants to repeat from Highway. It's the two top teams in the league, the two unbeaten teams that Nylum are going against. So it's not like this is just a night of wins. This is a night of full challenges and so far rising to the occasion. But again, this is still early on in this matchup. Yeah, and CLG is going to reconvene over towards this A site. Mo has picked up an AWP. He does blindly shoot. That's going to give away the location. He gets blind again, automatic with some nice counter flashes. And a molly, that's going to force Hayes over to the right. Automatic pulls out a flashbang at the wrong moment, gets punished for it. A nice shot by Hayes. He does have the bomb and he's stuck here. Hiko's going to take him out and Moe's just going to try and save this gun. He does have 3100 to work with. So he can buy armor next round. And he is going to pick off Semphis, who's hunting him down, trying to find him. Couldn't do it. So Moe's going to have the AWP. He's going to have a full buy here in this, this round. This is good. Yeah. This, makes, this makes up for the glass cannon buy because he wouldn't have been able to get an op out otherwise. Yeah, at least I don't think so. I can't see the friggin' well, money still. It's good. It's a good purchase, or it's a good find for Mo to keep that to keep that AWP for sure. I'm gonna reboot the game, so you do this one, and then I'll get my money back. Sounds good. Ooh, Mo goes for a spam, just barely misses things, and this is that mid control we talked about. Three members from the Hylum watching mid. One Semphis is gonna be pushed under the boost box with Sanks watching over him, and they have Automatic playing from highway and, and Valens playing from truck. So very very passive, and it's passive into an A execute. So. CLG throwing their smokes, getting into the bomb site. No one's actually there for Nihilum, but Terra comes running through, does take out Sanks. Automatic finds FNS, so some good trades down to a three on three, but the bomb site goes in the way of CLG. It's going to be all on the retake. Valence is going to try and push around a smoke. He avoids a flashbang. He's going to try and spray through the smoke and prevent the plant. He does. He creeps up into the corner. He's basically at the default plant spot. Hayes doesn't know he's there. That's an interesting position for Valence to be in. Now Hayes spraying one down. The smoke seal hasn't cleared yet. Valence hasn't been able to find anything. The Darius turned the corner. Hiko takes him down. Valence gets dropped. Mo so very low at A main. Hiko doesn't have much to work with. He does have a smoke. If he could just take out Cutler, he could drop a, drop a smoke on the bomb, and he does. And he's just going to get in on it. He's going to try and stick it. He finds it in he the smoke. Spray is not hitting it. him. He is going to do it. Nope, he gets knifed. Oh, and he stops oh. the defuse. He got off of it. 
That was a Cadian moment. That's and unfortunate. Cutler, Cutler went for the right swipes there because... The left click, but the, the quick swipes because he knew he actually didn't have the time to go for If he misses that first left click, by the time the knife animation resets, the diffuser's probably done. I think he yeah. actually could have stuck Unless he gets him in the still. back. No, well, Higo, exactly. Higo did stick it. It was, uh, I was actually on his POV. It was coming down, and then he, like, jerked his mouse to kind of mess with the hitboxes, I guess. And it took him off the diffuse. So, first round for CLG. And this is actually, I, I mean, due to the damage that's been done, you look at this buy from the Hylum. Uh, two Colts and all pistols outside of that. No kit. Look at the aggression from Sanks. Flash does go in, so they had some idea that he was up close, but he still manages to get the first kill onto Cutler. FNS losing a tiny fraction of 8 HP, but still able to trade it back. And Valens with the Hyper Beast is going to have to go into Hyper Mode now inside A. He does have support already rotating up from middle and from the form of Automatic. And Semphis has found his way all the way deep inside middle. Mo will catch him off. And that'll bring us back down to one man advantage here for CLG. So picking up back to back rounds will be big because, again, this, although not a money, full money bonus, does, does reset the income. And they have invested pretty heavily into this round. Mo would still be in a good position, but the rest of them would be pretty tight. Yeah, and CLG playing these this round very, very far back. All spread out, and just now they reconvene. They make a lot of noise. It's going to be automatic at the fort. Look, the one's at the door. He does spot him out. Here comes the Colt over to bail him out. Give him some support. Tarek drops one. Valens trades it off at FNS, so they are going to get into the bomb site. He's, Valens got to be very careful. Mo's off. is right on it, but he gets legged, but he gets the kill anyways. Tarek, good shot though on Valens over the top, but immediately countered out by Hiko. Hayes is going to go for this pop flash. And that's a play that Hiko knows, but he still catches him. Hiko wasn't blinded by that, and Hayes gets the better of the exchange, and now counter logic are rolling. But yeah. again, that's an expensive round. Again, but the big thing is that Mo was the one that. Oh, he's still light. Did he get an off out? No, they're going to throw it over to him. Yes, they. No, yeah, it's he's FNS. bottom one. He's bottom one, I believe. Okay, are they going to leave it to FNS, though? I think they're going to give it no, to FNS. No, they're going to give that to Mo. Okay, they're yeah, it does go. Me. Okay, I was going to say. Let's they not were be late crazy. getting it there. Well, I was going to say, he was <laughs> Let's not get 46. Too I think they were waiting him to counter buy out for his teammate who bought it, but uh, it was a little confusing because it went back and forth between the other two twice before Mo finally got it. I'm just, it was just a thought, man. Yeah, just a thought. It's all right. So, this will be interesting to see if Nihilum actually chooses to... I don't double save here. They have Semphis very low. Sanks and Hika both below oh. $2,000. Cutler spotted it. They went for the skylight boost. He blew out the window, which with three people inside the site would have held them in position, but they went for the peak. Cutler was already looking, and they immediately fell back off it. Otherwise, that was an easy kill for Cutler. Double boosted up at mid. We'll see if they can drop over and take control. No one in mid at all right now. It's a 2-3 split on the bomb side to the defensive side. Yeah, they have a stack over at B. Semphis actually has a flashbang in his hand waiting for an execute, I would assume, to pop flash his teammates in. And it actually looks like it's going to be a B split. Two players in mid are going to come through the vents and three through the passageway, so it's all up to the stack. This is dangerous, though. FNS is actually going to molly off part of the site. I believe that goes towards headshot, towards the grill. Automatic inside the corner does pop out well timed right there. Tarek does take the brunt of the damage and they still have that sack So he's gonna pop back out and this will make them overlook Hiko who does pick up the first but around the corner They go on to him. He's completely overwhelmed and the entry is successful two men down, but they will get this bomb plant that, that, that was a that was a solid setup that was promising there from from automatic Hiko and uh, and Semphis They got two out of it Got Especially where one. he double peaked. If he peaked the yep. first time and ran away, then there's still a chance to check the corner. But where he, they, they know it's just him and he goes down that close to the site. They had no idea Hiko was going to be there. Yeah, so Valens is just going to wait in vents until he hears the footsteps, try and go for an exit kill. I don't think Hayes is going to be fooled. He's just going to walk out from behind the box, so Valens might not find anything. Might be able to snatch up a gun, actually, if he stays in here and just waits for the bomb to explode. But he goes for it. Gets a dink, but nothing more. And everyone's going to survive on CLG. So three in a row now. Start to accumulate the rounds and claw back into it. This is T-side as well, and they're doing it the hard way. No pistol rounds. So Nihilum need to get things back in their favor quite quickly. And it's going to be a desperate buy again as Valen's onto the FAMAS. This will allow him to get out of smoke in two flashes, though. No head armor. But they're playing against AKs and Ops, so not a big difference. Smoke out mid-deep. That'll cover off big garage. 
Tarek. Waiting. I, this is interesting because there's no smoke out on A main, but there hasn't been a flash either. But Tarek's still playing passively, not taking the angle and using that vision to his advantage. He's playing tight enough. Moe's going to be the first. Okay, so Moe with the op will take that shot, but he's playing tight enough just to make sure they didn't go for the boost in the corner. I have to say, by the way, Titan with the run boost is probably the best team at doing that now because they don't smoke or do anything to indicate they're there, and Maniac is so good at getting up and just patiently waiting for them to walk past. I think more teams need to look into using run boosts now that they're legal in most leagues. Oh, Moe's looking for it. He does spot him. He gets him through the red box, it looked like, so I don't know that it gets tagged down to about 70 HP. This is a very slow paced strategy where they're letting Mo work and he misses the flick shot. Valence creeps out, finds an angle with the pop flash. He grabs the second one and he pushes up. He's got to trade his weapon out, but Hiko in the vents now. Sees Hayes come out. He just drops out of vents. He falls back, so he knows they've got mid control. But Valence continues his tear. A third kill on the round and automatic chimes in too. And CLG is destroyed in this round. And Mo's got to start to feel the pressure because this is a tryout for him. And those kind of shots, those kind of flicks, that's what they're expecting him to hit. That's what they need out of the opera if he's going to be the opening fragger. So this will start to play in Moe's mind. I mean, this is a mental game for him as much as a game for just uh, for, for counter logic. So Nylum do get back as they needed to do. Still decent money out for CLG, so we'll see one more buy. But it's getting fragile. Are they going to boost Mo? That's the bigger question. He does still have the op to work with. Nope, he goes right back to A main. So they're going to go for a similar setup. He'll watch the corner initially on the boost. This is the exact same play as last time. Cutler out towards Squeaky. But look how passive they are on the A side right now from mm -hmm. Nylum. Automatic, Valens, Sanks, they're all at the top of highway. No one inside the site. So even if Mo goes for that peak, which he's not, by the way, he's playing quite passively, he won't have any vision to work with. Yeah, I don't This is. I don't think this is going to be a situation where they let Mo work a pick like last round. I think this will be more of like an execute and just hit the bomb site. Mo playing very, very far back, waiting for that pop flash peak. But Valens this round isn't giving it to him, and here's Tarek setting up a smoke. He's going to toss it out. That's going to block cross. And like you said, a very, very passive setup. Cutler tries to fire through the open doorway. Tarek's going to find Valens. Sanks responds back into the 14-year-old Mr. Tarek. That brings us back to four on four. Sempus tries to come back up from CT spawn. He's a little bit late to the party, but Automatic doesn't need any friends at this party. He's going to just dance to the dance floor all to his lonesome. Pull a Michael Jackson and shuffle away as Finesse gets back into him, but it's all going to be on to just Finesse in this case as Sanks slowly lurks around the backside of the red crate. And that was a beautiful pop flash between them. There he goes. That's he does good. get one. That was a beautiful pop flash from Sanks and Automatic. Uh, Automatic working his way into quad late during that execute as they were creeping, as CLG was creeping out. Automatic, or uh, uh, Sanks coming in behind him in the bomb site and just flashes off the fence. And they both peek together and mow down. I think it was two or three. So very, very nice pop flash. Very nice mobile defense out of them. You, you said it, you know, with the beginning of that execute, it was a very, very passive setup. And, you know, when CLG didn't didn't take uh, take the aggressive route and just swarm into the bomb site. And Hylum responds with aggression of their own and, and, and takes it takes it away from them. Nice tries to come back over. So it's back to pistols. Nihilum, a little more aggressive this time. Valens is on that corner. Here's the door open up behind him. Has to turn back around. Does pick up both. Good accuracy control, but where were the others at A main? If they walked out and pinched on that, he was gone. And that's a free M4 pickup. No one else on the A site. They would have been able to get this bomb down. Yeah, Valens has got to be careful, though. He's feeling it right now. So you can see him getting aggressive. He's very, very confident. But three players on the other side of the smoke. FNS is just going to lurk out. He's going to pull out a flash. Maybe the wrong moment. He is. FNS is going to drop him. Sanks just gets there. But FNS spins around with a Tech-9 and grabs that one, too. So that's going to be two Colts into their hands. That's going to be a bomb planet. Excuse me, just one Colt. But oh my lord, FNS making plays. FNS... Not silenced just yet, but Mo is. This brings us back down as Sempus has to get into a much better position. He is going to be into the flank on the backside, so Automatic just needs to keep them distracted and buy time for his teammate. Doesn't need to overpeak and get taken down. That's exactly what happens. Sempus now catches Hayes, and he takes FNS low enough, so Sempus just barely gets there in time. As FNS almost evades around the corner, but he gets the kills, and now the defuse and Nihilum continue forward on his seventh round. So 4-3-3 yes. three, three is our splits. It was 4 nothing. 4-3, and now 7-3. Nihilum definitely picking up consecutive rounds as needed because their, fra their, their economy got quite fragile at one moment there.
Yeah, I mean, it was a five on three against an eco, and it, and it turns into a one on one. So that's brutal. Nice plays by FNS to get those three kills there. And, and see, still, still waiting for. I mean, these aren't. We're not. These neither of these teams are really controlling mid. Now, I love more than CLG, but CLG hasn't really tried to do anything mid. They've been going A so very much. Nico's gonna find Hayes to start it off this time. So Nylum with first blood this round. Asteric falls back. Watch for what CLG do to respond because they haven't really been taking much of a mid fight lately, to be honest. And Automatic and Sanks have been able to rotate up highway quite quite easily and quite quickly on those A retakes as a response. So they need to at least get someone in a position to hold these rotators. In fact, they're gonna go for a vent boost this round as well. Well, there's that Molotov to push the vent player out, and normally they have a B player to watch for him to fall out, but he got taken out earlier by Hiko. So now it is going to be mid control from CLG. They have boosted up. Tarek gets one. He got reboosted into the vent, and Tarek just drops him. So that forces all the mid players to kind of fall off. So they've kind of seeded mid control, but Semphis is pushing up B, so he's got great information at the moment. Finesse does get automatic, brings it back down to a three on three. Good control in the mid to open it back up. We saw that shot onto Hiko. That changed the complexion of things, but Valens with an eight will take down. One, Tarek will go down as well. As Finesse wants to come around this corner and he has to run. He's not yet in position. Finally, Semphis gets into cover. That was so close to him being caught out, but he still gets the bomb planter through his own smoke. Good angle hold. Moe's gonna pick it up. All that remains, one on three, has the op now and also the bomb to work with, but only 11 seconds. Yeah, only 10. He's gotta save this. Yeah, nothing he can do, and he might even get hunted down. I mean, I know the economy for Nihilum is fragile, but... Sanks is in position. Sanks is in position. Mo gets Sanks. He needs to stay alive. They're not... Okay, they won't be able to get to him now. He hides inside Zed, but... Could have been Harry if he drops that off after the round expires, and that's one more little mistake. Of course, I think he's playing quite well, I'll be honest. I'm not calling him out here. He's playing reasonable. He made that glass cannon call, but he misses that flick earlier. He gives up a gun late, they don't get the money. It's little things like that that they're going to weigh in the back of his mind. Again, the pressure's on him to perform just as much as the team. I just don't think he's, he's uh, you know, if they're going to have this op from him, he's not really getting involved when they try and execute strategies. And A, the op's not the most useful weapon here. They finally fast boost him. He's going to have a chance on Automatic, who looks like he wants to peek. There is one player pushing up very, very close beneath him. But Nylum's doing a great job of not giving Mo anything. This, these opening picks with an AWP are not working out because Nylum's not really playing that peaky or aggressive. Sempis on the reverse boost, not even up and over yet, already finds Mo. Now the op did drop down the backside, so they'll be able to recover it because that would have been disastrous if it ends up on top and no one can reach it. And they'll put Tarek back up as a response. He may catch out Sanks, this comes on scope, does get him in the end. So Sanks goes down, this brings us back, but again, it's just the op to work with these three pistols. And they're going to split on A. Cutler's already out towards Squeaky. Valens is the one inside the site, but watch for Automatic. He's going to start the rotation now up highway. And as that front smoke comes out on A main, this will give him position to set up however he pleases, essentially. And as a response, CLG is going to fall off the A site. Valens does have a Molotov to work with, but here comes the bomb rotating off. Back towards B. Looks like it's going to be a little bit of a fake. It's going to be Hazed and Tarek. Tarek trying to get an entry with this AWP, but once again, like I said, no one from the Highlands is giving it to him. Valen spots out Hayes, volleys him at yellow, and flashes over. And Automatic's the one that still holds this off angle. But they need to realize now the bomb's not there. Semphis has already spotted the footsteps of one, makes it two as he gets Cutler. He comes back around. FNS drops before he can even get the shot into the backside on Hiko. So Tarek forced to save, but he might not even be able to. They're close to him. And if time's expired, he has to get away. He needs to get around the corner before Automatic pops up to take the shot. I think he will. Just barely in time. So another gun saved, but another round lost. Nihilum are looking very good right now. Yeah, defensively, they've been fantastic. Not only in the last match, but now into this one. And this is just looking, uh, this is looking a little bit cool. Starting to run away with it, really. I mean, CLG hasn't been able to get much going. They've had some close rounds, but it's all come from, I feel like, just some just some duels that they've won on some mistakes from Nihilum. Tactically, they, they don't really seem to have made very much progress outside of those three rounds they've won. Kness waits to go for the execution. Throws the smoke over. That covers off your connecting point. And here comes your boost. Tarek's already up. They do spot the close player. Good team flash. Still a massive amount of damage dealt. 
onto Tarek, down to 9 HP, but opening frag no less. And now Sempis is going to go for this boost with Hiko. He'll put him inside the vents. This will give them a bit more mid-presence where they've already lost that first player and cover off the B side, but it's inside a main and all the action's happening as Automatic tries to get aggressive and up close. Finesse will drop him off on the trade. And Hayes, who waits patiently, will catch Hiko. So now they've got a real opportunity here on CLG's side, but not if Sempis has anything to do with it. He'll catch Hayes immediately as he comes back in, and Mo and company rotating over to B, and that's that's a good call. Completely yeah. open as Sempis rotates away from the site. Yeah, great great call there by CLG. The, the bomb site is wide open. They're actually slowing down, though. They throw out a molly into upper. Nothing's blocking lower. Sempis has a free shot, so he can stop this. He can't get the kill into a jumping FNS. There's the smoke. A little bit curious they didn't just toss that earlier. That's a little bit risky, but... See, they're just gonna get a free plant. If, if Valens is, is watchful as he, he could take out Mo. Mo's only got 22 HP. He didn't spot the barrel. He's checking behind him. Oh, and Mo misses the shot. That's a huge kill to miss. And here comes Valens grabbing Cutler as well. Oh, so all of a sudden no. it's a two on one. FNS is stuck inside the bomb site. Wheels around. He does grab Semphis. 29 HP on him. Valens is kind of gonna wheel and deal around these boxes. Doing this ring around the Rosie like earlier, and Valens is gonna win it. He gets three kills on Man. the retake. And it all comes down to Mo missing that shot on the flake. Yeah, he's definitely missing key plays tonight. And, I mean, this is... I mean, CLG, this is the, the roster spot they're trying to fill. This plays into his chances big time because he hits that kill in vents. That leaves three players up in a one, one on... Basically, one on three retake. He goes down, and as soon as automatic drop... Or, pardon me, automatic at that entry. Nothing FNS could do. Another round CLG potentially should have had. You have to say, and, and when your opera on T side has five kills to work with, I mean, you, you kind of got to start looking at how you can possibly open up sites when he's not hitting shots. Yeah, and he, he, even so, I mean, they have they have opened up some. I mean, that round they opened up B perfectly. They, they ran that strategically, fantastic. It was just you know one missed kill from mode, everything just kind of comes, you know, everything just kind of crumbles around it. So. Unfortunate there for CLG, but they've got to make do. They're doing this default that they like to do, spread out. Hayes over towards B. He's got two players watching for it. Hiko's in a great spot. A pop flash goes a little bit too far, but Hiko wins the battle anyways behind, behind the cover of the Molotov. And now a five-on-four situation. Automatic again on the shuffle from Highway. Tries to get up close. Finesse is going to go ahead and distract over on the B site, but the bomb's down outside A made it. They're already pushing through on the CLG side, so they have to go back for this at some point. And despite that their entries have already come in, the rotations are coming around. This pretty much means right now that FNS was going to be the player to grab the bomb, but he's caught in mid, so this is peculiar because CLG is deep and committed. They will bring it back down to two on two. Sempis dropping now as well. Mo hits that one, so there's a change in pace. And he might hit this next shot, does. Makes up for lost ground in the last round. Takes down Hiko, and now they've got it up to four rounds. 10-4, but Nihilum, this is uh, this is a great half. You have to be said either way, because this map's come back to 9-6-8-7 more and more commonly. Yeah, this is a fantastic half out of them. And uh, that, that round, Cutler was, was just an animal. Three entry frags from Cutler. So nicely done by him. Mo chimes in with two as well. But Cutler really opening things up, giving Mo the space he needed to work with. So four to ten. And it's, uh, it's another situation where he, the Highland strung three rounds together, but they're forced onto a force buy, kind of. They have two rifles and three pistols once again, so even though they've had so much success, it's come at a cost. Sex takes down Cutler. Finesse, good read, catches Valens. Trying to lurk forward from the long position. He goes down Mo, so this still gets back into the advantage for Nihilum, but Hayes has no more of that. He may take a brunt of damage here on the headshot from Hayes, or pardon me, from Automatic, but still gets the kill. I do want to say that kill that, that Hiko just got, he did it in the round before onto Hayes. He's dropping his own smoke, and he's just got the angle lined up through the smoke. And that's how he's gotten two kills. It's unreal, and Sanks throws a flash, blinds himself. Mm, well Hiko played, Tarek. Finesse, but, yep, Tarek with the taps. Tarek stepping up big, has 15 kills. He went a little quiet in the latter half, but that's when the rest of his team came on and uh, made up for lost time, so... 10-5, though, that's... Um... I yeah, mean, that's, that's rough. CLG, you, well, you can, you can break it down on how their cash performances have gone, but it's not always a map that works in their favor. No, it's not. And, and five is actually on the uh, the good side, I'd say, for their for their T side. They do have, and they, they do have like a fifty one percent win rate on, on their T side cash, but um, the the hard part is that their... if, if this is going to be a map that's not in your itinerary, what what do you have left? Because the map pool is becoming yeah. deeper. You're getting it's a crucial map. 
Well, you're, exactly, and you're getting into GSL style picks and bans. Like you're gonna leave cash in and get basically only have one ban go against you. So what are you gonna ban? Cobblestone. All right, great. Fnatic's gonna go ahead and ban something like Overpass, and then all of a sudden cash is gonna get picked whether you like it or not. You pretty much have to get cash rolling because it's gonna be in almost every map pool you see in a, in a best on uh, in a best of three. Specifically when you when teams know you're not proficient on it, they're gonna pick it intentionally to go against you because pretty much everyone else is fairly decent at it. Yep. So and this here... hurts international play for them. You know, we talked about this on train, CLG being one of the best pistol teams we have at the moment, a 91% win rate on their CT pistols, none more crucial than this one, really, to get them back in this match, and they're actually doing a very aggressive counter boost. Tarek's going to be in for a quick flank on this A hit. Smilem going to be ready for it. Well, he certainly is, as is Tarek. Mo contributing as well, but there's Villains and Semphis to bring it back a little bit closer, down to a two on three. And Semphis does one better. Nice shot on Finesse as he comes around from the tr truck side. Hayes still in position on highway. Wants to tap above the toxic barrels. Does manage to collect Semphis on the repeat. So Valence has to do this. Just two players remaining in his way. Make it one as he gets Hayes into the one-on-one. -on -one. But look at the HP. Only 11 to work with. And he has to go back over to his left side for that bomb. Spots up Cutler. Oh! And actually hits him. What a shot from him as he repeaks. Valence with a monster round. Man, CLG. We talked about pistols. They've won... I think 83% this season? Well, they've lost two in this game. <laughs> what a shot from Valence. Absolutely huge. That's, he's been, he's been so clutch this map, and that's just, that's gut-wrenching, because that's, that's another round where CLG got, uh, you know, the first two or three, that was like a four-on-two situation there for some time, and Valence and Semphis just bring it back for him. Man, oh man, that's crazy. Both of those pistol rounds were firmly in the grasp of CLG. So they throw out the fire to keep Hayes away from the NBK spot, and as a result, he walks directly into a slaughter. As the SMGs come in to do all the work, Automatic and Semphis contribute for most of the kills, as Sanks now will take down Cutler, and great anti-eco. Some damage dealt, but no one dropping just yet, and that's how it's going to stay. Bomb goes down just before, but Semphis closes up the round. <laughs> and the Hylum looking, looking very, very good. They, they caught some momentum, they caught some fire here, and they're just running away with it. And that's, that's, that's the key on, on your anti-eco's when when these second rounds can be so incredibly dangerous you buy those smgs not just because you don't have to i mean the run and gun is great with them but you can afford the molotovs and you notice even on a second round they they just clear out that entire fence spot you said the nbk spot quad as well they just throw molotovs in there and they can pretty much just kill them as they run out it's like flushing rats out of a corner but <laughs> oh my goodness they just spray them down as they try and pop flash their way into, into the a main Automatic, man. There's no stopping this guy. Where's the switch to put him back on manual? Because he is just mowing them. Gets flashed out, still turns around and controls his recoil. Cutler finally does get sent. This is automatic. Back around the corner for more. Hayes will finally drop him, but Valens goes right back into him. And Valens, is he going to get the extra money? Mm, yes, he is. This is, we talked about this earlier in the night. How CLG went for quite some time with only losing four or fewer CT rounds and I believe it was like seven or eight matches. And since then, they have a 40% win rate on their CT side and six catch matches. So their defense has just slowly been deteriorating. And it's, that's a crucial fact at the moment because the CT side is where they have to make this retake and mow again on this fourth round with a glass cannon off. Yeah, second time we've seen him go for it. We saw him do it in the first half as well. It didn't really pay off, so... Good vent position right now from FNS. He still hasn't broken them out either. No one has, so he'll be able to be in there pretty much for free. They're actually going to fall him out, so he's going to fall off this. Let Tarek get aggressive toward the player who's lurking out, Hiko, in the B main, and let FNS come back over toward Generator. They're actually rotating off. This is a really interesting call. I don't know what read they had on this because there's been no activity at A unless they're just, like, presumptuously assuming... Presumptuously assuming. Wow. Well, it could just Unless be... they're assuming that Nico pre-firing is or Hiko pre-firing is just a fake. Yeah, th this is a very, very heavy lean over to B for no real reason. But they are going to fall off it once again and just run right back towards A. Cutler's going to take over mid. Actually, they have two this players is almost, in mid. This is almost one of those situations where you want to push the site you don't think they're at just to see if it's correct to gamble on that site. But instead, Valen's well, going to catch out Tarek. 
Yeah, and Tarek pushes when his teammates are rotating away, so no one really there to cover his spot. FNS has to come back in, and now they force themselves into the bomb site. Valens is hiding in the smoke, though. This is a really cheeky spot. Cutler might not be prepared for it, but Valens misses the shot. He does catch him off guard, but now one player is coming up highway. That's Sanks. He's going to get two kills. Can't get a third, but the A bomb site goes the way of Nihilum. So bomb will get planted and in position. Three still up versus two on the retake. Hiko, automatic, and Semphis. Cutler, FNS, and FNS already up on the catwalk, does have position from above, but can't spot. He did spot! He actually saw him, but didn't realize that he is okay. Catches Semphis when he looks back, but Hiko's gonna take down Cutler. Good flash in from FNS, brings it back down to a one-on-one, -on -one, but automatic, they're both on low HP. 20 versus 16, FNS gets above. This cut, so commonly used and well played from him. He collects the 4k on the round, but no, does he have a kit? Yes, he does. I don't think he gets this. He walked too far away. I don't think he has this at all. FNS, did he not have the kit? Is that what he went back for? What j uh, man, great play from him to get back into that. Takes the one on three, and then the bomb goes away. So unfortunately, Jason's audio cuts away. But I, I thought he had the kit the first time he walked over. He might not have had it. That's probably why he went back. And 14 rounds now for Nihilum, despite an absolutely massive individual performance from Finesse. That's absolutely insane. So... Almost to the point of breaking here. Five rounds only for CLG, the team that lead the standings right now in ESEA's professional division in North America against Nihilum, who for the first time this season are playing on this night, and they're already got one game against Elevate, who's also undefeated, or were undefeated up to that point, and they look to do the same right now. This is this is extremely strong. Yeah, this is fantastic. Am I back? You're back. Perfect. Yeah, this is this is great play from the Hylam, and, and that's another round that just comes so close for, for CLG. Oh, Mo, nice shot. Through the door, takes out Sempus very, very early on, but... Look at this stack now that CLG have four players over here, so this round is a good gamble, a good read that they have going on. No execution quite yet. The Hylam's just waiting for him to peek, but the nice pop flash forces Sanks back. He's caught on the wrong side. He's got to come out and get in a fight with FNS, who takes him down. It's going to be a five on three. Five on three to potentially put things back on tilt or back at least somewhat in their advantage because this thing's on the rails right now. This boat is definitely tank tipped and about to sink. As Mo comes back up, uses the scout. Cutler actually gets the shot. He makes it good on the second peak though. That's automatic down. And Nihilum getting stopped in their tracks. A great force by finally Hiko gets them a kill, but he's in an awkward position as FNS jumps out through the smoke behind him, and there we go. CLG managed to get their sixth. Is it too little too late, though? That's the bigger question. Yeah, this is uh, this is going to be a long half here for CLG to make this comeback. They do get the benefit of an eco round out of an island to build up some bank behind these guns they've picked up. They're guns that the AKs they've swapped out. But Nihilum, Nihilum is looking just so good. Sanks and Automatic, their entry fragging. Even Valens, this, this, this map has stepped up. He's been an absolutely beast mode from that pistol round. And actually now look at this push out of CLG. Eric's going to swing out and grab two. Sanks this responds, is solo mode. He yep, mows them down. Man, that's, that's the aggression that in situations like this, you just got to take the fight to them. Yeah, and that's... I mean, those are those are pushes that we see out of them on gun rounds. Uh, it's just I, I, they're feeling a little, you know, talking to Hayes and them. They feel very, very comfortable in those aggressive plays. You know, they they want to they want to be aggressive. They want to be the aggressors. And right now, it's all they really have left because they're they're getting beat up whenever they play a passive. Oh, Vanessa, this time, in from heaven on B goes for the late drop. And they're going to set up for an A-take, it looks like, on Nihilum's side. Aside from Hiko, who's playing that lurk position inside the sunroof. Valen's just with the Tech-9, making noise at A-main. They have a couple of Molotovs to work with. And they're over at B- or they're over at a bomb site, so they're going to do a smoke execute, it looks like, over here. Over into the A-site, it's just going to be CLG, Hayes, inside, Cutler's at Highway. Smokes are about to block him. Where are these mollies going to come? Actually, they're doing a line of smokes. Cutler has a perfect vision of the entire sequence here. They've all fallen back to boost up. Semphis tries to go for the peek through the smoke and pre-fire onto where the barrels 
should be located on the back side of the fog. Sanks, what a shot with that deagle. Takes down Mo, and that's just more frustration for him. That evens it back up. But as I say that, it's going to be Cutler and FNS that bring CLG back into it. Of course, Sempest did lose that exchange, as we saw. So it's only two that are left. Sanks and Hiko. Make it just Hiko, who, by the way, is... Uh, not to call him out on it because he's had a fairly solid night, but is your bottom fragger, oddly enough, for Nihilum? But not by much. He's only one kill behind both Sanks and Semphis. Uh, this is... Cash is actually one of Hiko's worst statistical maps for the last three seasons. Well, yeah, the, I mean, the, 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 it's harder to be a Lurk player on Cash, truthfully, because it's so far to the other side. The only way you could really Lurk it successfully is after the rotations when you catch them out the rotators in mid. Yeah, you also other, have to be a very, that, a very aggressive Lurking style, and that's just not Hiko's... Yeah, it's other than that, you're basically just selling fakes. That's, that's really all the lurk can really do. Or you're playing so passive that if you're if you're making yourself relevant and getting one or two kills, you're so far away from the retake that it doesn't even matter. More aggression out of Tarek pushes up into the door with that AWP. They do have a double op setup. Mo with this one. This is CLG. This is more like it. Of course, they are on an anti eco, but this is looking a lot more uh, what we're used to seeing from them. <laughs> Well, this is almost like that Fnatic uh, setup that you talked about with an op at each bomb site, Mo over at B, Tarek at A with an AWP, and then three players in the middle of the map just being very, very mobile uh, each way. Yeah, that, that setup works wonders for them. It's really, I mean, the angles are so tight. Basically at B, there's about three different place, place, places Excuse me, you can play it from that immediate drop off heaven with that op, back toward generator, even to, in toward checker. If you really want, you can play it at heaven, but you're only going to get one before you're giving up the whole site and doing that. And the A site, I mean, the A main hold is so, so easy. And to hold the door, all you got to do is rotate. Oh, Cutler. Cutler, what? Cutler, my goodness. Talk about a lineup. There's three for him. Those Nihilum are the plays that will get you back into it. I was just going to say, Nylum are on tilt now. Sanks does get back into Haze, but things are falling apart because this is their first buy round in... Since the last save, which was just last round, okay, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense the way I, I <laughs> phrased that. But the point is, this is their, I guess, I guess the only buy room. Right, double save and, and very slow money still. They're going to be right back onto the save. What a round. Yeah, this is a, a lot more a, composed. A full blow. I think their last buy was actually like two or three AKs and a couple tech nines. So that, that was brutal. It just shuts them down immediately. And... Okay, so this is, they did that triple push out, out B, got, got kills on the, on the anti-eco, and then they, Tarek pushed door with the op, got an opening pick, and now Cutler pushes B again and gets three kills, so Nihilum's got to do something to respond to this aggression, and if CLG keeps it up, this is something that's going to get caught on, it's going to be punished. So they need to be very careful moving forward how they, how they attribute that, that aggression, and Mo gets a nice pick out of Sanks. Pop Flash yeah. is going to push him back, but Tarek chimes in as well. And it's the op at mid this time from Tarek, so both of them are working wonders. Mo missing the shot up close that time, but with both of them flashed off, goes for the pistol exchange, him staying alive. Even if he doesn't get the kill, bides time for his teammates to rotate, and as a result, Tarek's already in heaven. Finesse collects Valens, and now we're both on double digits. 11 for Counter Logic Gaming. And Nihilum, they have to, man, get, at this point, just play for the 15th. Get that one, so at least get into overtime and slow this back down, because they're going full TSM right now. Yeah, it's, it was 14 to 5. It's been a six round run for CLG. They're now at 11 to 14, making this comeback alive. And this double op setup has really carried them, carried them this far as well. And they have so much economy to, to make it work. You've got to yeah. basically break the bank, and you're not going to do that when you've got 10 9 for Tarek and 13 2 for Cutler. Finesse, pop flashing out in toward the B main that time. Not even really a pop flash. That was quite deep, actually. I think they went for the run boost in A and just missed it. So Cutler didn't try and get up there. Now it's going to be Sanks' turn. They're giving Sanks the op at A behind this smoke. They want him to find a pick with it, but a smoke is just going to plume right now, so he's not really going to have a chance until about 55 seconds. And that's going to slow things down. Hylum still completely spread across the map. He or Tarek finds a kill on a Hiko. This no is looking possible. impenetrable. Yeah, this double op's looking impenetrable. They need a, basically a strong A execution, which they haven't had in a few rounds. If they can start to set up smokes, maybe just try and get in and get a bomb down and play the post plant with a, one, one slow, laid-back player with an A main plant, maybe they have a chance. But B is definitely closed. They can't get anywhere near the site. Hiko dropped that time so quickly to Tarek, it was insane. As Finesse is inside the vents as well, so mid's out of contention. Valence does find his way in, though. There's the double. Now they have a chance, but that bomb gets dropped on the backside of the CT. 
crate, and now they have to basically play all the way deep inside the site. They do catch Tarek off on a mist. Sanks, great response frag through the smoke, but Cutler gets behind them. They haven't spotted him up. Don't take him back in response. He's down to 33. As Automatic has to go against one on two and can't do it. And Counter Logic Gaming, this is full control from them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rounds in a row to get back into the. Yeah, this is uh, that was an intelligent play by Cutler there to fall back, wrap around the wrap around the forklift by that, get a nice kill. But also, you said it. This is looking impenetrable if they're spreading out like this. If they're going to spread out and they're going to go against the double op at both sites, you're going to get picked off. And you, they need to have some kind of an execute. They need to have some kind of group aggressive fast hit, get into the bomb site where those sniper rifles aren't nearly as affecting at, or effective at retaking sites like they are as picking people off. So. But, but here we go again, Hiko, spread out. Tarek's got the op over here at this site. He's got to be very, very careful. Zephyrus lurks out towards Squeaky. No one pushing it this time. Stacking up as I am in mid. That's the other thing. They haven't really opened mid anywhere either because everywhere they've gone has been basically shut down by this double op. It's going to be an auto sniper this time for Mo. If you can't hit your flick, why not have 20? Yeah, right? They gotta be careful. Cutler in the vents, ready to peek out as soon as this hit comes in. He's looking antsy. Sanks, oh, good sick. entry on Mo. So Mo's already out of it, but they don't spot Cutler up in the vents like you say. He takes the first and drops immediately. Now he's able to support on Valens as they try and use that Tech-9. And they actually do massive damage to Cutler on the way back across the site. Automatic in from the vents now. This gives them a bit of a chance. Molotov's gonna go out, but Cutler does get caught by that. I wasn't sure it was deep enough when it was initially thrown, but it does catch him. And now FNS has to play this from Generator all by himself. And he's got the first two. He may get more than that because they haven't even got an angle on top of him yet. And there's already a good position here from CLG. Finally, they've got an advantage on Nihilum side, but the HP stacked against them as Valens is only on 50, and Tarek walks around the corner, there it is, Semphis gets them to 15, and take a deep breath Nihilum, you can rest easy because you're at least going to overtime at this point. Alright, you want to talk about Ops not being able, not being very effective at retaking bomb sites. Tarek was at that B bomb site for that entire execute, stuck behind his smoke, too scared to come in with the AW, waiting for it to disappear and while all of his teammates were dying. Could not do anything with an AWP trying to retake that site. And that's got to feel good for Nylon to get that 15th round. Oh, they can just relax. I wouldn't be surprised if they close it out here quite quickly in the next two rounds just because they can play without the stress. Flashing through, though, is hazed on AMA. Semphis caught by that one. I'm not sure what Semphis was doing because the smoke was already out. And he went for that, like, YOLO bunny hop jump off the box to get over to Cord Locker, but there was no need. There was no vision, so it's not like he had to beat the op shot out, or bait the op shot out, rather. Here's what's scary. Back to this double op setup that the Hylum couldn't break until Mo picked up an auto sniper. Tarek's got it in mid. He did see one get boosted up, but Sanks just comes out mid, not able to get the kill out of Tarek. Tarek just gets away. FNS peeks mid and takes him out. It's going to be a five on three. And if this defense holds true and it remains impenetrable, then it's going to put Nihilum onto a save. And that's going to put it at 14 to 15. This is a scary, scary situation for Nihilum. It's definitely scary. I mean, it's, it's not done yet. There's no question about that, especially the defense we've seen from CLG. But at least they can get this into overtime because 14 rounds, it gets elusive. Mo does get Nico. I keep calling him Nico, but he go that time. His automatic goes back. But he drops immediately after, and it's all on Valence. Who does make good work of Tarek. Does have the bomb as well, so he can actually do this because... They've got them divided. That first smoke does catch out Hayes, but he draws back and not aware that Cutler's that close on highway. If he found that second angle, if he was there, that was basically three one-on-ones that he forced himself into, but he didn't know it. Yeah, that plant would have been so crucial as their money is reset. You can see it. Tempest and Sanks both at Dean Hundred. That's going to be a tough buy going into the last round. If there is a last round. Yeah, well, well, Pretty sure we're gonna see all 30 <laughs> yeah. regardless. I am too. Just saying, there's always that chance of these Tech 9s and P250s, but this defense from CLG has really stepped it up. They ramped it up at about round five and they haven't back. This is this is interesting though, because Nylum's getting far more aggressive with numbers than they have before, and Hayes realizes it. He tries to fall back off the site, and the flash comes out. He does get the first cutlers there to support. Pops back out, and they're actually mowing them apart. There's no way through, and Heatco drops. I thought for a moment that was gonna look really good on Nylum's side. But it turns out to be a really good rotation from CLG instead, and here we go, round 30, we get there. What a comeback from CLG. What a comeback.
This is like the old CLG we talked about. Once they lost Pistol on there, their win percent is CT on this map in their last six matches was down at 40%. But this is a completely different CLG that showed up to make this comeback happen. And it's just been such spread out play from the Highland. They've been getting picked off by a double off setup. Now it's just Mo, Tarek back onto a rifle. And they actually are going to commit over towards this A site. Four in the door. It's only Mo with an AWP who's looking at the door at the moment. This is a full change up. Never run this strategy. They're desperate to get this last round and close this out now. Valens, gonna be your first entry, at least make the noise. Takes down A's, beautiful shot, well placed from that tech nine, and now they get the way inside the site. Bomb's gonna go down from Semphis. They're gonna have to play for this retake, and Tarek is a long way away. As yeah. fast comes up the highway. Two smokes and a Molotov in the hands of the Highland. They have a lot of ways to, to uh, delay this retake. Semphis is going to sit on top of the bomb as well, which you don't often see in these post plants. But this many players up, I'm sure it'll be checked, but it still gives them a chance to get the early drop on Mo, who's running through. Finesse goes to the backside. Mo still finds Semphis with the off-up close. As Sengs gets back in, and it's going back and forth, but it's Tarek that's all that's left. And Nihilum close it out in the most dramatic of fashions in a one-on-one. -on -one. It was overtime where it was all over, and Nihilum go 2-0 and on their debut night against the two best teams in the league. That's an excellent performance, but there's definitely questions to be had over that T side because that could have been a lot easier.